now that you know how to bulk, let's look at the perfect cutting diet. The most important thing you need to understand when wanting to lose weight is that there is a big difference between losing weight and losing body fat. The former is a lot easier than the later. If you cut your calorie intake in half today, you will definitely lose a lot of weight fast. However, much of that loss would also consist of lean muscle mass, which you don't want. Now, the science behind weight loss is pretty straightforward. It's calories in versus calories out. This means that how much you eat will be a lot more important than what you eat. Unfortunately, the rule for losing body fat are a little more complicated. Not only do you need to maintain a negative energy balance, but you also have to find the right balance of macronutrients. So when it comes to a successful fat loss diet, what you eat really does matter. To give you a clear picture of what is necessary, let's go through the most important aspects of your cutting diet plan step by step. Step one will be creating a calorie deficit. Like I said before, a calorie deficit is crucial for any type of weight loss. It is achieved by consuming less energy than your body expands on a daily basis. Introducing a calorie deficit is fairly simple and can be summarized like this. First, calculate your TDE, then subtract a certain percentage from your TDE to create a moderate calorie deficit for your cutting diet plan and then reach this calorie count by eating mostly healthy food. As you can see, this is very similar to the process involved in creating a bulking diet. To calculate your TDE, simply use the online calculator that I linked in the course here. Once you have calculated your TDE, you will probably ask yourself how much you need to subtract to reach the optimal calorie deficit. Unfortunately, there is a lot of contradictory information about this on the internet. And I understand how this can be easily confusing. In general, there are three classifications of calorie deficits. Small, which is 10 to 15% below your TDE. Moderate, which is 20 to 25% below your TDE. And large, which is more than 25% percent below your TDE. With this in mind, there are some sources that will recommend a small deficit and some that will recommend a moderate one. Very few recommend a large deficit. The argument for a small deficit is usually that it will lead to less loss of muscle. However, studies have shown that larger calorie deficits don't necessarily mean more muscle loss will be lost. If you maintain a strict workout regimen, Thus, if your goal is to lose body fat fast, moderate deficit of 20% below your TDE will probably be your best option. However, for someone who has a fast metabolism, a smaller deficit will most likely show similar results while at the same time sacrificing less strength and giving you the option to eat more during your diet when compared to a more moderate deficit. Step two, in your cutting diet plan is maintaining a high protein intake. Once you are in calorie deficit territory, you want to keep your diet to be high in protein. Study after study has proven that losing fat without losing muscle is all about consuming enough protein every day. How much exactly? Like I said before, the sweet spot lies anywhere between 0.8 and 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight per day. If your diet involves a very large calorie deficit and you are already very lean, you might even want to go with 1.2 grams of protein. Although for beginners, one gram will be fine. Make sure to reach this by eating quality protein rich foods that I outlined in the previous lessons. Supplements will definitely make your life easier, but you shouldn't use them as your one and only source of protein. Step three, in your cutting diet plan is optional. This is why I say try calorie cycling, but don't rely on it. Calorie cycling is a popular strategy when you eat more calories on workout days and fewer calories on rest days, while staying at a long-term calorie deficit. For example, when measured over one week, the logic behind the strategy is to maximize strength and recovery on the days you exercise. 
while providing your body with fewer calories when less energy is expended, so meaning on your rest days. So does the strategy work? Unfortunately, there has been very little clinical researches done on calorie cycling. Much praise is based on anecdotal evidence from advanced bodybuilders, which might not translate to the average trainee, let alone someone starting on their fitness journey. However, there is also no inherent flow in calorie cycling, which is why it's really up to you whether or not you want to try this out. If you feel like adding another aspect to your diet, go for it. It will make diet planning a little more complicated, but the psychological benefit of eating more on workout days can make the change more tolerable. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. If you have any questions, comment below, give me a like and just follow me to don't miss one of my videos on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. To your success, your health and wealth mentor.